eyes over here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the reason I say don't get distracted because if you're not careful, the things that seem to be, it, well, let me say it this way, distraction comes a step at a time. It comes a little bit at a time. Now, Esau, you know, we know the story of Esau. Esau gave away his birthright, but the blessing was stolen from him. Now, so when, when Jacob came in, uh, 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 and, and he, uh, the, the Bible says he tricked him out, but what happened is he didn't, you know, he knew it full well what he was doing when he gave away his birthright. See, a lot of times you can give a, it, the, there's a, some, I don't know, I heard it, somebody might, maybe an old saying, if you give, give the devil an inch, he'll take him out. See, if you give him just a little bit, he's not going to be satisfied. You can compromise just a little bit, and he's not going to be satisfied. So don't compromise with the devil. Because if you compromise a little bit, he's going to take a lot. And that, that's happened in our lives. We've compromised in some of our lives. We've compromised. And because we've compromised in a little area, we end up just like Esau. We end up crying and weeping because we compromised in one area, and he took something else that we really wanted. Don't let the enemy distract you. Stay focused. Stay with God. Everybody say, I'm not going to get distracted. I'm not going to get distracted. I, I, I've, got, I've got too much at stake. You've got too much at stake. The vision and call of God, the thing that God has put in your life, is too valuable, too precious to get distracted right now. And all kinds of smoke screens are coming around. You know, people are beginning to say all kinds of things. But you can't afford to get distracted. Not during this season. The people are looking for me. They're looking for us. They're looking for the believers to take a stand to open our mouths and declare what thus say the Lord. See, if they knew what to do, they would have already done it, but they're looking for men and women of God that's seeking the face of God, that's crying out to God to come out of our prayer closet with an answer. So I refuse to get distracted. I have to listen to the voice of God because there'll be many things that'll look good. There'll be many things that'll sound good, but good is not what God may not be God. But you want God and not what just good. God will be good, but good may not necessarily be God. Amen? Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Talking about not being distracted. And during this season in our lives, we've got to remain focused. Because if you, if you continue along the path of right and righteousness, you'll begin to see step after step, step by step, where the Spirit of God will begin to move you'll begin to see the progress. Now, if you look at the situation like where you are now, you may not see, well, man, you know, we just went through this flood, of this flood in my life, we just, I'm just going through this tragedy. I don't know how I'm gonna make it. Just continue to take a step at a time. A step at a time. You can't afford to stop. I never will forget, of course, this is, this is just me by nature, but I never will forget we were going through this terrible storm. And, uh, and you could hardly see in front of you. But I slowed down a little bit and I kept moving. Other cars were pulling off and people said, well, that's the right thing to do. But I just kept moving. And this is what I saw life like. I just kept moving. I kept moving at a good safe speed where I could get through. And it wasn't long before I had come through that storm or that uh, disturbance. And right on the other side of the storm, I mean, it was, it was something I'd never seen before. Right on the other side of that storm, it was like the clouds began to clear. And, and, and you couldn't see the sky, but it was just like clear. And, the, and there were other people that had stopped back in the storm. And I don't know, it's no telling how long that storm continued to turmoil, continued to turn. And they were staying in the storm. You see, you can't stay in the storm. It requires movement. God requires movement on our part. So everybody say, I got to move. Somebody got to move. And it's going to be me. Amen. I'm not going to stay here. Oh, yeah, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's begin reading at verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous or dangerous times shall come. This is Paul talking to Timothy, that in the last days, dangerous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, 
unfaithful, unholy. Do we see some of that now? Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fear, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power. It says from a certain time away. Let me read that in the uh, New King James. Listen to this. But know this, that in the last days, perilous or dangerous times will come. Everybody say the last days. See, I believe, in the, you know, we people have been saying this for a long time. We are in the last days. So we can, according to this scripture, we can expect dangerous times, difficult times. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. They'll be boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Right now we're seeing children almost run rampant. They're unfaithful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power. See, when you deny the power of God, that's all you have is a form. But God is a powerful God. God wants to demonstrate his power. And I believe we're going to see the, again, the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. Like I said, I had called these people up, but I had been praying for them. And God says, I want to demonstrate my power. They're going to see that I'm a God of compassion, a God of love, a God of their breakthrough. God will demonstrate his power in my behalf and in your behalf. Amen? Thank you. It says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power. I don't want to deny the power. Neither do you. Drop down to verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So persecution will come if you decide to live godly. But evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. In other words, you, no matter what's going on around you, you stay with me. You stay with what you've learned. And you've been assured of knowing of whom you've learned them. And, uh, that, and that from a child, you've known the Holy Scripture. So it's, it's in your guts. It's in your, it's in your blood. You've known the Scripture which are able to make you wiser to salvation through faith. Verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Everybody say all scriptures. You see, when we just said, you know, we need to seek the face of God about the election. We need to seek the face of God about how, about how to vote. I believe we need to go into our prayer closet. We, begin, we need to pray because we have an answer. In the, in the, uh, the Bible time, Bible days, the king sought the counsel of the men and women of God. Who's seeking your counsel? Is anybody asking you any questions about anything? You know what we need to do? We need to be there to say, God, I want to be an example. You said if your people are called by your name, and we will just humble ourselves and pray, you'll show up. God is showing up in our lives. See, but there's something I must do. I can't, I can't, I can't be lackadaisical anymore. According to the scripture we've just read, we're in the end times. And if I don't make purpose, if I don't purpose on my heart to, to affect a change, if I don't uh, purpose in my heart, God, I want you to use me, then I'm going to fall by the wayside because I'm going to get caught up in all this turmoil. I'm going to get caught up in being a lover of pleasure more than a lover of God. See, it'll be a step-by-step -step thing. It won't be like you'll wake up one morning and completely change, completely caught away. No, it'll be step-by-step. -step. Give the devil, the devil an inch and he'll take a mile. Sometimes we're giving him a mile. Now, there are a lot of things you don't feel like doing. But if it goes against the principles of God, then I must 
refrain from doing it. Amen. I, I need you to begin to begin to uh, talk to God. Say, God, I hear what Pastor is saying, and I, I, if that's me, I want you to deal with me. Because the person around you may not recognize, it, may not see it. You know, your neighbor, the person in the house may not even see it, but you know. Everybody say, I know. You know where you are with God. You know why you do certain things. You know what you need uh, uh, to, to be an impact on your surroundings. I may look like the most spiritual person you've ever saw, but I know what's down on the inside. I know the struggles I'm going through. I know what, what the enemy is, is coming against me with. And I've got to stand and I've got to fight with every fiber in my being because I'm in the last days. I'm in perilous times. I'm in dangerous times. And I can't afford to allow the enemy to distract me because too many people are depending on me. People are depending on me to hear from God. That, um, when I say me, I mean you too. They're depending on you because you say you're a believer. We say we are Christians. And if we don't, we're going to have to begin to walk as one. We're going to have to begin to be in unity like never before because there are many false prophets out there. There are many people out there that's professing to be Christians, but they're not giving Christian attributes. Now, I'm not saying we have to agree with everything. I'm not saying uh, you know, I, I, I need this to go across the airway. You don't have to be a conservative to be a Christian. You can, you, you, you know, if you're not careful, you look at the TV and they'll make you think if you're not conservative, you're not a Christian. I don't have to be conservative to be a Christian. I love Jesus. You know what they were saying about Jesus when he was a, they were saying, he can't be, look, because Jesus stirred up things, didn't he? Jesus was the opposite of being a conservative. Because a conservative was the person that was conformed. Jesus did not conform. Sometimes we are not allowed to conform. If conforming means going against the word of God, I cannot conform. Because I'm a child of God. And I've got to begin to speak and declare what does say the Lord. Now I've got to make sure that I've heard from God and not my flesh. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let's just continue to read on here. I want you to see that during these dangerous times, you may need to do something different. 2 Timothy 4, beginning in verse 1, it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. He said, even though all this is going on, although we're in dangerous times, although people are denying God, although people are denying his righteousness, although they're denying the power, he said, you must preach the word. You must be the example. I don't care. People on your job may be denying the power. They may not even believe in God, but you must preach the word. See, if you don't preach the word, that means the word won't get preached. That means somebody's going to hell because I've kept my mouth closed. Somebody's going to be persecuted because I want to protect my body. My, I want to protect my, my, circum, my, my reputation. I don't have a reputation. If it's, if it's not God, if God can't keep it, I don't want it. I'm selling out to him. You've got to sell out to God. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the times will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own love shall heat, shall they heat to themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, they just gonna run to what they want to hear. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned to fables or be turned to lies. And it's, it, it requires an effort on my part. It's an effort on your part to continue to preach the word when everybody's coming against you. To continue to preach the word, to continue to live holy when everybody thinks you're uh, some kind of, uh, I don't know, super spiritual person. No, you just love God. And you just want God to move in your life. You want God to move in circumstances. See, there are people right now, there are people hurting right now. Maybe sitting right beside you. They need a comforting word. 
They need the Holy Spirit to speak through you to give them that word. But sometimes, you know, we can so become so confused or so consumed with what we're going through, we won't even utter the word out of our mouth and say, well, God loves you. Now listen to this. Drop down to verse, uh, uh, 2 Timothy 4. Drop down to verse 9. Paul's still writing. He says, do your diligence to come shortly unto me, telling Timothy this. He said, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved what this present world. You see, there'll be people that you'll think with you, but they'll forsake you for this reason only, because they love this present world. The world has a hold on them. That's why we have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he says, everything else will be added unto you. But we're too busy seeking after the world, seeking after the, the things of the world, rather than seeking after the things of God. And, but then we want the anointing of God. See, God's anointing. God's going to anoint the people that obey him, the people that he can give an instruction to, and he can begin to allow that instruction. No, that instruction, instruction will be carried out. Because if, if he gives you an instruction and you don't carry it out, or if you try to take short, shortcuts, you'll end up short-circuiting the plan of God. And there are a lot of things that happen in our lives that we want to blame it on God and or blame it on the devil. I believe the devil, get, you know, he, he sticks his chest out when you start blaming a lot of stuff on him because he ain't have nothing to do with it, but you give him all his accolades, all this glory. He doesn't have that much power over my life. Now, I can give him that power if I open my mouth and begin to declare words, negative words, but I, I refuse to do that. And it takes an effort to shut up because everything in you, all your fight with your being is going to want to utter those negative words. But no, I'm going to stay with God. I'm going to call those things that be not as though they were. Suppose, I'll give you this as an example. Suppose you have been, you know, you're going home from work and you have been going this route you know, all, you know, all, you know, ever since you've been in a job. And now uh, you had, you had to pass this big form, like, and this form was circled in. And they had two Doberman pictures in this yard, in this form, in this circle. And now, uh, when you passed, they were, they, they were, they were always parked at you. And, uh, but, and so you had to, you know, you had to walk all the way around this farm, almost uh, half a mile, to, a mile out of the way, just to get to your destination. Stay with me, I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture here. Well, today, this particular day, you're passing this farm, and you're about halfway, and you look, and the, the dogs are way on the other end. And so you know that you could jump the fence, run across, and even if they run at their fastest speed, there's no way they could get there before you get to the other side. So here you are, you're contemplating, do I cross the fence, run, to short circuit, to shortcut, or do I go all the way around? Well, you sit there, you think, and all of a sudden you say, well, there's no way for these dogs to catch me before I get, jump the fence and jump, reach the other side. There's no way. So you climb up on the fence and turn out, run, start out running. Well, as soon as you, you know, as soon as they see you on the fence, the dogs are headed toward you. You get, get, you get about two feet from the fence. The dogs are way away from you, and you step into a hole. You're trapped. You get your foot trapped. Let's hold the picture right there. The dogs are bearing down on you. Who are you going to blame? Is it God's fault? Is it the devil's fault? Or is it your fault? Some people look at it and say, well, the devil's fault because he put that hole there. No. No. may not be. If you had decided that you weren't going to short-circuit the things of God, that you were just going to go through, you, you know that's how you've been going home all this time. And you know it's wrong for you to cut across this man's yard. So let's quit blaming the devil for something that we have done in our own decision. What I need to do is just repent and say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Forgive me for making that decision. Forgive me for, for trying to short-circuit your plan for my life. Forgive me. For seeking first the world, money, rather than your kingdom. Everybody say, forgive me, Lord. You see, there's a thing in our lives that we need to ask God's forgiveness for. 
we need to ask him to forgive us because I've got purpose. You've got purpose. And I've got to see, see the purpose of God manifest in my life. You see, there are some things that, that, that haven't happened in my life yet. Maybe because I'm trying to short circuit God's purpose. Demos was a follower of Paul. Paul says, uh, Timothy, you come on to me because I need some help right now because Demos has forsaken me because he loved this present world. Well, God say that about you, I mean. He said, I, I need some help down in South Baton Rouge. I'm from the, uh, Sherwood. They were working with him, but they forsaken that. And they decided to seek worldly things. They become consumed with other things other than my desire for them. Will you come help me now? Because they have, I, 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 I poured into them. This is what God is saying. I poured into them. I've shown myself mighty in their behalf. I've given them direction, but they have forsaken me to consume worldly things. And I, I need some help right now. So would you come help me? Because it seems like they have gone astray. And now, he's not writing this to, to, to unbelievers. He's, he's not writing this to the world. He's writing this to the body of Christ. Because we expect the world to do foolish stuff. We expect them not to live holy. We expect the, the unrighteous not to do what's right. We expect them to say any and everything about the candidate. We expect that. But what about you? Are we falling into that same trap? Am I falling into that same trap? I put it that way. Am I falling into that trap? Of speaking things I ought not. Forsaking God when he's depending on me. Verse 16. Second Timothy 4, verse 16. At my first, at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. So they forsook me, but I'm asking God. I pray that God will, will, will still minister them, will, will, will open their eyes and don't charge them for this. Verse 17 says, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. Everybody say, The Lord stood with me. Say it again, The Lord stood with me. No matter who forsakes you, if the Lord did, we say, he, he, he made this uh, uh, a statement. He said, not, uh, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. Strengthen me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Even though they forsook me, God stood with me. God will stand with you. God wants to be your body, your, your body by your side. But you have to trust Him. You have to, you have to let Him know that you appreciate Him standing with you. But to, in order to realize that you got to keep your ear to his mouth. And when he, when he says do something, just do it. A lot of times you won't understand something, but just do it. I remember I was telling the prophet this one time. I said, you know, I may not, I may not know why I'm telling you this, but uh, if you, we just have to obey. Just, just do it. And let's watch see what God does. If, if God doesn't do it, then it can't be done. Everybody say, thank God for doing it. People of God, you're in a situation now. You're in a time for, for, for God needs you. Don't forsake him. Don't be like they, they must. Don't forsake him not right now. Because there are people depending on you. Your neighbors are depending on you. Your friends are depending on you. Your family is depending on you. Because you've been the only thing stable in their lives. You've been the only thing that does, that, that's been solid. Now, you, you know, you're not perfect. You may make mistakes. But you've been solid. They've seen Christ in you. The hope of glory. But when we start wavering, when we start forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, when we start forsaking the things of God, don't, don't think you're in this world by yourself. People are watching you. People are watching us. And you have no idea what impact you may have on someone else. God, I'm not going to forsake you. I don't care how perilous the times get. I don't care how difficult the times get. I don't care. I'm going to keep my eyes on the Lord. I'm going to keep my ear to his mouth. And what he says, that's what I'm going to do. Nobody stood with me, but the Lord did. And I was delivered from the mouth of the lion. James chapter 1. Let's turn there real quickly. James chapter 1. I 
thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit, for the anointing of God, for showing up mightily in my life, showing up mighty in your life. There's power in prayer and strength and unity. And if we begin to allow the Spirit of God to begin to manifest in our life, we'll begin to see his power manifest like never before. I yield, I decrease, so he can increase. As I pray and seek his face, he shows up. James 1, verse 12 says, blessed. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Who promised it? The Lord. When are you going to get the trial, I mean, the, the crown when you endure the temptation? There's temptation out there. There's a devil out there. We're, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. So the righteous will suffer persecution. I've got to figure out how, how am I going to come through this, realizing who's on my side. Verse 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is what? Drawn away of his own love and enticed. You are tempted when you are drawn away of your own lust. Money, uh, the, the, the mammoth would draw you away. God didn't do it. You were tempted and drawn away of your own lust or your own desires, what it's saying. You know, sometimes, you know, Sometimes we can have what we call good desires. And uh, if we're not careful, we can be tempted away from, with that lust. And, and lust, and this particular lust may not be, you, you may just have a lust for, 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 for I don't know, let, let's just say you may, if you think your job is your source. God gave you the job, and you need to work as unto the Lord. You need to be diligent and put your hands to the plow. But if you put that job before God, and every time, you know, uh, there's a, you know, a minute of overtime, you are there. Every time, you, and, and then you're missing church. The reason I'm saying this is because I used to be there. I used to look for ways. They better not have overtime. I would, I would think nothing to call a pastor and say, well, I'm not, I'm not going to work. And sometimes I didn't even call. Talk about myself now. But you see, at some point, we've got to grow up. I had to grow up. And what made me grow up again, because I, 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 I love, I had a love for God. And I began to press in. I said, Lord, and he said, well, who are you doing this for? See, I had to realize I was letting my flesh, the love for things, get ahead of my love for God. And so I had to begin to rein in my desires, rein in this love. Now, this takes, this takes something. Because now you've got to, you got to know that you're trusting God. When you decide you're not going to take that overtime, now you've got to realize, God, I'm trusting you. And you've got to begin to give, and you've got to begin to sow. You've got to do what God has called us to do. You have to be obedient to this word. Because now, you know, you know the scripture says that the, 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 the people of the world are wiser than the people of the kingdom. What they were saying was, you know, they're they going to do everything they can. They'll connive and scheme and do everything they can. Well, in the world, in the, in the world, we do all that. They do all that to get the things of the world. Well, we know what the Bible says, and we won't even do it. We're in the kingdom, and the Bible tells us to give and tells us to sow, or maybe tells us to pray for our enemy, and we, and we won't do it because we don't feel like it. But then we won't. Now, see, the world expects their kingdom to work if they do what the world says. Now, we should expect our kingdom to work if we work it. I have to pray for my enemy. I have to sow and give. I have to, you know, get back to the things of God. Now, people of God, I'm sharing this with you. I'm not fussing. I want you to know that we're in some dangerous times. Everybody say, well, we've always been in dangerous times. You may be right. But I want you to know, I believe God is doing something here at Living Word. God is doing something here on Sherwood. As we begin to seek the face of God, as we begin to say, God, I'm not going to forsake you. If you, if you help me, if you just show me how to get back, if you just point me in the right direction, I'm going to stand for you. I'm not going to forsake God. I'm not going to put the things of the world against him. 
Blessed is the man that is doing temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to him that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth what? Death. I'm talking about death in every area of our lives. Death in our finances. Death in our relationship. Death, death in our relationship with God. Death in our relationship with people. Sin is a cause of that. Cause of that. Now, what causes sin? What's the, uh, what's the gradual onslaught of sin when you begin to seek after the things of God? I mean, things of the world rather than the things of God. When you put the things of God, the things of the world ahead of the things of God. God wants to use us so mightily. There's a purpose and a plan in my life. God has a purpose and a plan for me. He has a purpose and a plan for you. First thing I can't do is I can't shortcut, short circuit the plan of God. I've got to hear from him. I've got to pray and seek his face and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And as he begins to direct me, I, I can't allow my partners, my close friends, my confidants, the people that I, I love in the natural, I can't allow them to distract me because they will. They'll begin, to, they'll begin to pull you out of what God has called you to do. And really, they don't mean any harm. They're your friends. They're your partners. And they just think you, they just want to help you out. They just think you, you know, you just going a little bit overboard. You, you just got to look for out. It don't take all that. You know, I'm a Christian, and I don't do all what you do. Well, you may not have to do all what I do. This, I'm doing this for God and not you. Uh, when I got born again, I was, you know, in, in this club, and I loved those people. I, I love maybe a little strong word. I liked them a lot because we had a good time, man. I used to get together. We used to play bid with or play games and, and cards, and I mean, I loved that. And I said, well, you know, if I could just get them saved, then we still could play bid with. But then I began to find out, I began to try to do that, and, I, and it wasn't working. They began to move this going in two opposing directions. And the strain was on me. It wasn't on them. Here I'm trying to pull, and they sat down on me. Because timing wasn't there. Everybody said timing. They hadn't seen me for long enough walk this right here. I had just gotten saved myself. And so I was so on fire, though. And, and it's like, I, I don't know. I guess they was waiting. They said, let me just see how long it's going to last. Maybe they had seen other people before, but they said, I'm just going to see. I, this is what I'm thinking. They didn't, say, they didn't tell me that, that I could think of. Nobody told me that, but they were just thinking, let me see how long it's going to last. Let me see if you're going to be this strong. Because I remember you two weeks ago. I remember you two months ago. And this ain't the same person. You, you, know, you wouldn't have done this. People are looking at you. I, and I'll be up here with Mary uh, going home, and, and uh, they just blessed me. When they, when she, what was the old saying? I did it, Lord forgive me. And when people around you, when they can see a change in your life, and they know that there's no way you could have done that on your own, it had to be God. And I didn't know this story. They were telling the story about somebody, she had stepped on somebody's feet, and, and uh, the lady came up to her. I think it was at church. She said, don't you know you stepped on my feet? And she said, I did it. Forgive me. Can, can we just say that I did it? Forgive me. Can you just say I did it? Forgive me. Because there are a lot of things you'll do. And rather than getting puffed up, just say it, forgive me. No, instead of that, you may want to you, you want to give them a piece of your mind first. And then you ask for forgiveness. No. If you did it, say I did it, forgive me. Even if it wasn't all that bad, say, yeah, if it was, you know, I did it, forgive me. God is looking for us. He's looking for me and you to stand up and be the, the example in this earth. Because we are in dangerous, perilous times. And these dangerous, perilous times will destroy us if we don't press into God. 
I got to hear from the voice of God like never before. I, I can't afford to get distracted right now. Because there are many voices out there, many, many distractions, many things pulling me away from the things of God. And I was just, you know, just a few days ago, I was just talking to God, sitting in Selena's car, and I said, Lord, I want more of you. I need more of you. I need to see the signs and miracles. And I, and I, and I said, I, I began to just uh, go back and say, I remember when we used to, you know, we would not deny the power of God. We were looking for opportunities to pray, looking for uh, places to go witness, looking for places to tell people about Jesus. And now, am I, have I gotten too complacent to where I want to go rest on my couch? Have I gotten too complacent where I want to just go watch, a, you know, uh, uh, Walker, Texas Ranger? Have I gotten too complacent? And I began to talk to God about that. Because I want him. And I've got to give him something to work with. If he wants to give me the anointing, the least I can do is give him my time. The least I can do is just spend time in his way because what he, what he wants to exchange from me, what he wants to give me is a whole lot more important than what I'm giving. But a lot of times I wonder, have I become too distracted? Have I let my grandchildren distract me? Have I let my wife distract me? Have I let the things that I have distract me? Have I let the way I think about things? Have I let pride? Have I let things just distract me? And I, you know, all the only person around there is you and God. You know. Have I let things pull me away? Have I become a demon? Have I, have I forsaken Paul? Have I forsaken the things of God? Because I love the things of the world more than I love God. This is something subtle. This is something that's, you know, it's, it's not going to drop on you all at once. This is a subtle thing. And you've got to realize that you got to, that's why you have to take an account of yourself. Am I doing what God has called me to do? Am I doing what he wants me to do? Because let me tell you something. You can prosper in this world. You can be diligent in doing things. You can be put your hands to the plow. You, you, you can be, you know, showing up early for work, paying, you know, work, doing a good job, and you will prosper on that job because God has to honor diligence. So there's nothing wrong with that, and I must be diligent. I must do a good job. I, I, I must uh, do, uh, do because uh, I'm working here on, uh, on, on this earth. But when it comes to a time where I've allowed this thing, this person, to distract me from God, I've got to get rid of it. I've got to make some adjustments. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to continue to do good. You're not going to continue to work hard. you got to realize, God, you are my source. I thank you for giving me this job. And if you make a decision and, uh, and, and, and it's toward God and the job, say, well, you know, you, 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 you know, you, you chose with God over this job and you're going to have to go. Don't you know that he'll give you, he has another one for you? God will always open up doors. If you put him first, I can't. Be distracted. That's what I want to encourage you today. Don't get distracted. During this season, during these difficult or perilous times, I guess I don't want to fight you, but you know, you, you have other guns that's up for you. The opportunity, you, you have to be up for the opportunity to suffer you. There's, 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 there's coming a time when you have to know before the decision comes what you're going to do. Because if you wait until the decision gets there, if you wait till your job gets there, if you wait till your friendship gets there, chances are you might make the wrong decision. But if you say, God, I'm going to make the decision based on your will, your will for my life. And you, you do that up front. Everybody say, it's already all right. I'll get sleeping. I'm about to. I just want you to know how serious we are. 
this year and how, how serious time we're in. And the reason I want you to know that because every, if I put my finger on every one of it, every, every one of us, have, we're going through something. Every one of us have a reason to be distracted. Every one of us have, we're going through it or we have some loved ones going through it, which means we're going through every one of us. But I've got to decide right now, God, I choose to trust you. I choose to put my trust in you. And you need to ask and say, Lord, I need you to open my eyes. Help me to see the way you see. Help me, Lord God, to allow the power of God, the Spirit of God to rest in my life. Help me, Lord God, to, 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 to be conformed into your image, to be transformed, to be changed from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. If you ask him to do that, he'll show up. Every eye closed right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the power. Now, Lord, you know there are many areas in our lives where each of us have the possibility to get distracted. Each one of us will have different reasons for getting distracted. I need you, Lord God, to deal with each one of us individually. Deal with me. Help me, Lord God, to see the way you see. I, I don't want to get distracted. I don't want to forsake the gospel. I don't want to forsake you. We're in too dangerous of a time. And Father, I need you. Holy Spirit, we need you as my comforter. We want to please you. We want the anointing to rest upon us. We want you to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think.